After education within the thymus, T cells circulate throughout the lymphatic system and accumulate inside the lymph nodes, spleen, and other secondary lymphoid tissues. Other types of cells are also present, including B cells and macrophages, both of which can also act as antigen-presenting cells. Consider a macrophage. Should it encounter an antigen for which it has no specific receptors, it can still engulf it using, for example, its lectin-like receptors. This is termed nonspecific internalization. The pathogen bearing the antigen is contained within a phagolysosome in the macrophage. Other vesicles fuse with the phagosome, bringing proteolytic enzymes in. Elsewhere in the macrophage, major histocompatibility complex molecules are being synthesized at the endoplasmic reticulum. MHC class II molecules are transported by the vesicles, which intersect the pathways of vesicles released from the phagolysosome. Proteolytic fragments of the antigen bind to the MHC class II molecules in a special compartment, displacing the invariant chain of the class II molecule. Loading is facilitated by another MHC encoded molecule, called DM. The vesicle containing the MHC class II antigen fragment combination migrates to the surface of the macrophage where the contents remain attached, presented to any Th1 cells that may be encountered. A Th1 cell that recognizes the particular antigen will bind to the surface group of the macrophage using its T cell receptor plus a CD4 molecule which recognizes the MHC class II part of the presented antigen fragment. This binding alone is insufficient to trigger T cell activation. Other co-stimulatory molecules already on the surface of the T cell come into play. ICAM1, which stands for Intracellular Adhesion Molecule 1, on the macrophage, binds to LFA1, lymphocyte functional antigen 1, on the T cell, while CD2, also on the T cell, binds to LFA3 on the macrophage. Meanwhile, an interaction between CD80 on the macrophage and CD28 on the T cell delivers a powerful co-stimulatory signal to the T cell. The macrophage releases cytokines, including interleukin-1, and the T cell makes interferon gamma. In this way, each cell activates the other. The macrophage is put into a more hostile state to destroy any bacteria it has taken up. The T cells released interferon gamma will activate other as yet uninvolved macrophages and other cytokines such as interleukin-2 stimulate T cell replication. The macrophage is not the only cell capable of processing and presenting antigen. B cells are also able to perform this function. A B cell with the appropriate surface immunoglobulin receptor takes up the antigen. There's a huge variety in the types of receptors, so there will be a B cell suited to virtually any antigen. Recognition of most antigens depends on both T cells and B cells, so the B cell must present the antigen to T cells to determine whether an antibody response is appropriate. The antigen is internalized and degraded by proteolytic enzymes. These cleave off peptide fragments from the antigen. These fragments then become associated with the MHC class II molecules in a compartment where peptides from the endosome 
and class II molecules from the Golgi body are brought together. When the two vesicles meet, some of the peptides are able to bind to MHC class II molecules. Which of the peptides bind depends on the genotype of class II molecules available in that individual. The vesicles carry the assembly to the surface of the B cell where it is presented. This antigen MHC class II complex is recognized by T helper cells. On encountering it, the Th2 cell binds using its T cell receptor and CD4 molecule. This is essentially the same as occurs between macrophages and Th1 cells. Where it differs is in the co-stimulatory molecules and cytokines involved. ICAM-1 still interacts with LFA-1, but is now joined by CD40, which pairs with the CD40 ligand on the T cell, and CD80, which pairs with CD28. CD40 is a molecule which stimulates B cell activation. The Th2 cell now releases cytokines, including interleukin-4 and interleukin-6. The signals cause the B cell to divide and differentiate, creating a large population of antibody-producing cells specific to the antigen. These two examples involve leukocytes as antigen presenters. They bind the fragment from the antigen to an MHC class II molecule, and so this is termed the class II pathway. In the case of a tissue cell becoming infected, for example, in the lung or mesopharynx, the infected cell can be its own antigen-presenting cell. Within every tissue cell, proteasomes produce peptide samples from all molecules present in the cell, including the cell's peptides as well as any foreign ones. MHC class I is synthesized by ribosomes on the endoplasmic reticulum. The peptide fragments are transported to the endoplasmic reticulum and loaded onto MHC class I molecules. MHC plus antigen combination is then presented at the cell surface. Cytotoxic T cells circulate through the entire body after their education in the thymus. Their T cell receptors are specific to any non-self peptide combined with an MHC class I molecule. When a cytotoxic T cell encounters a tissue cell presenting such an MHC antigen complex, it binds through its T cell receptor and CD8 molecule. This triggers a cytotoxic reaction by the T cell against the infected tissue cell. These may be mediated by direct interactions of surface molecules, or signals may be sent by cytokines. Perforin, or granzymes, may contribute to target cell destruction. Any of these alone, or in combination, may instruct the infected cell to die. This mechanism, using the MHC class I protein, is called the class I pathway.